Hi there, I'm Katie Cat, and this is our weekly Astro Tarot. Let's first start off with what's going on in the sky by way of planetary positions. Um, we might be able to get more reflection in regard to which cards have shown up and why they've shown up and what exactly we are being asked to look at and work with this week. Now, we have the sun in the beginning degrees of Libra. Right ahead of the sun on the eastern horizon, we have the planet of Mercury in the last degrees of Virgo. Now, the sun will move through the sky to noon and then to the western horizon, and we may have the opportunity, depending on what's along your skyscape, to see the planet of Venus in the first degrees of Scorpio. I believe she's at three degrees currently of Scorpio. Then we have Pluto in the last degree of Capricorn at retrograde, it's at 29 degrees. We have two planets in the sign of Pisces. We have Saturn at 14 degrees retrograde of Pisces. And then Neptune, I believe at 28 degrees of Pisces retrograde. We have Chiron at 22 degrees of Aries. We have the planet of Uranus in the sign of Taurus at 27 degrees. We have Gemini, uh, in the sign of Gemini, we have the planet of Jupiter. I believe it's at, what, 16 degrees? Let me just double check here. Do, 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 do. Mm -mm. It's at 21 degrees of uh, Gemini, the, the planet of Jupiter. And then we have Mars and we have the moon currently in Cancer. So if you wake up in the morning tomorrow before the sun rises, you know, around like, oh, five in the morning, maybe six in the morning, you may be able to see uh, Mars and then the waning moon. Now waning because it's getting closer to the sun and as it moves closer to the sun, there's less reflection on the moon's surface. So we'll just see you know, the crescent moon as it gets close to the sun and then it becomes a new moon. And by next week on Thursday, it will actually have surpassed the sun and be on the other side of the sun in Libra. So we will have a new moon next uh, or on the 2nd of October and it also will be a solar eclipse. So we're in the kind of the eclipse zone right now, which are times of change and times where we're asked to take a look at our life and and make big shifts or the big shifts just happen for us um, in some means or some way in our life, depending on where uh, those the angle of that particular uh, eclipse is happening. And this time it is happening in the planet or in the sign of Libra over here where the sun will be. Um, Libra and of course Aries so it's finishing up there and then it will be moving into the Virgo Pisces axis so if you have anything in that axis between Virgo and Pisces or the late degrees of um, or the beginning degrees of Aries and Libra then you're going to be heavily affected by this particular eclipse um, so let's go ahead and look at what's going on with the cards I think it's interesting. Okay, so the the opening card that we have for today is the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups is associated with the sign of Cancer. In Cancer, we currently have the Moon. We also currently have Mars. Now, the sign of Cancer is all about safety and security and motherhood and, you know, nurturing and the home. That's what it naturally governs. And, of course, depending on which house you have cancer in in your particular chart it's going to be bringing that energy of nurturing to that area of your life and it alongside the energy of the home because cancer is naturally in the fourth house but depending on the time of day that you were born it could be in a different house in your natal chart now what's interesting about this is wherever mars is at Mars is going to be creating change. It's going to be creating shifts. And it was just dancing with the waning moon. So the moon, when it's in a waning phase, when it's lessening in light, it's it's letting go of something. So it's letting, it's asking us to let go of something that we saw when the full moon happened, 
just about a week ago because we're in about a quarter stage right now because it was a full moon when the moon was over here in the last degrees of Pisces when the sun was in Virgo. So we have to consider that we're kind of going through this process of seeing things and letting go of things. And in this particular aspect, it's happening, coming up here, new beginnings are happening by way of relationship. And in, in connecting with something that could be possibly karmic because the eclipse is happening in that space. And that's our opening card for this particular uh, reading for this week. Now the challenge, which is showing up, which is interesting, is a major arcana and the major arcana of the devil card. In the devil card, you see two people that have their hands on this, what looks like a gear and a kind of evil donkey figure behind them. And they're, they look as if they're almost bound to this cycle. And it speaks of being bond, bound and, and having an, an experience of bondage to something that's not helpful, that's a self-imposed limitation. And yet we can, you know, get out of that situation if we're mindful as to where we're wasting our energies and what's not actually useful and what has been limiting to us. But that's the challenge. We have to be honest with ourselves and looking at ourselves in our day-to-day -day life around what, what it is that we do cyclically that we need to learn to let go of because it is causing some kind of limitation in our life. Now, what's interesting about this card is that it's governed by the sign of Capricorn and the, and the planet of Saturn that rules over the sign of Capricorn. Now, we have Pluto currently in the sign of Capricorn. It's in the last degrees of Capricorn, which means that it's asking us to finish something and to finalize something in that sense of in that space of Capricorn in your particular chart. But Capricorn is a energy that is aligned with the pinnacle of the or the zenith of the zodiac in its nature right it's our legacy it's the mountain goat that wants to climb to the highest thing it's our reputation it's our life path it's who we are in fr in front of the world and it calls for responsibility to do that now having some kind of transformation in that in that space it's asking us to deeply transform some area of our lives that is limiting us so that we can actually freely move forward in the direction that we're called to move in. Now, what's so interesting about this as well is that we currently have, you know, Saturn in the sign of Pisces. And so it's asking us to, to have responsibility about some behavior that we need to dissolve or let go of because it's in the sign of Pisces. It's in a retrograde position. So it's in a space of review and then we also have this other energy in the sign of Capricorn as well with Pluto that's asking us to transform things as well. So this is what's showing up as our challenge. And consider that Pluto is going to be retrograde in uh, Capricorn, I believe, until mid-November. Um, no, mid-October. So it stops going retrograde at, on the 11th of October, and then it starts moving direct again, but it won't be fully in Aquarius until the 20th of November. So we are in this kind of finalization phase around something in our life that we're deeply needing to transform. Now, the way through that card showed up as the Five of Cups. Now looking at the Five of Cups, there's three cups that are spilt in front of the individual and their head is down looking at them, at the spilt cups. And yet there's these two cups behind them that are upright. Now in the background, you see this tree that has these leaves that are being let go into the wind. And the reason why I drew that particular aspect inside this card when I drew these cards is because I had an interesting experience in the woods one time in uh, North Carolina in an eco village where I was in a situation with a lot of people and something was being said that was really frustrating me but all I did was stay silent and it was like I felt a physical knot on my throat and 
every time I went to want to speak. It was like something was keeping me from speaking. And I was questioned about it later by my friend who was present at, at the gathering. And they were like, you had so much you could have added to that conversation. Why didn't you say anything? And I told them about the sensation of this knot on my throat. And then they asked me what I was going to do about it. And I said, well, I feel like I need to go, you know, into the forest and just scream. And, um, and it's interesting because the next day I ended up packing a bag of things with me, like sacred things with me. I brought my chakra oils, which I had formulated and made. And I had brought some sage and some an offering and was just planning to go out there to meditate and, and spend some time working through what was going on with my throat because I felt a blockage in my throat. And uh, I got out to the space because there was a labyrinth on the land there. And I asked, you know, my guides to help me find my footing and to know what to say and to know what to do. And I sat down and I started this process of this meditation with my chakra oils. And I started going through every chakra and going through this kind of method of breathing and visualization and combining numerology with the chakra system and uh, kind of getting these uh, awarenesses as I was moving through the breaths within each chakra system. And when I got to my throat, I heard the words, let go. And at the same time, I heard what sounded like raindrops, like the droplets of rain, but I, my eyes were closed and I noticed that I didn't feel like any rain was falling on me. And so I opened my eyes and the trees were letting go of their leaves. At the same time, I heard the words let go. And so it, it was a like prof, it was a very powerful moment for me to be in the woods and to have that experience and to feel and hear when the trees were letting go of their leaves because we're asked to do that in our lives. We're asked to let go of that which has spilt over and, and where we want to put our energy and at what time we want to put our energy in which direction. And I know it's a long story, but when we consider the individual that is in this card and, and maybe when you consider the things in your life that are limitations to you, whether they're, you know, relationships that are not in alignment with what you want in your life or whether they're relationships that are harmful for you or whether they're situations or jobs or circumstances or something that ultimately is limiting you in life. You have to ask yourself if it's something that you need to fix or if it's something that you need to let go of. Because the person in this picture is putting all their energy here, looking at the spilt cups as if, you know, all this has been, is gone. And yet there are these two cups behind them. And the trees remind us, especially at this time every year in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, uh, it's... It's the time that all the trees are changing color and getting ready to let go of their leaves for the year, at least, you know, the deciduous ones. And they're, they're going to be dropping their leaves and letting go of that which they grew toward this year. And what falls to the ground will continue to nourish them, just as we can see this as a nourishing and an offering of something that we enjoyed and had in life as well and not spend too much energy looking down here at the ground and instead turn around and look at what is there for us to realize and to accept in our lives that's been waiting for us all along. Now, the ultimate outcome came in by way of three cards. And as I had mentioned, a fourth card came along. So we have the Page of Pentacles, which is someone who is examining their parts, examining situations and people and circumstances and all of those things and how they influence them and their day-to-day -day life. This card is commonly associated with the sign of Virgo. We just had a huge movement through the sign of Virgo, which, you know, means that we were looking at things closely, assimilating information, 
um, gathering data, kind of trying to separate the coarse from the fine, taking a closer look at things, maybe being a little bit more critical about situations and really examining our values overall, um, because this is a practical earth card or practical, you know, earth situation that we are looking at things and seeing like what the true value is and what, what is useful and practical in this situation. Did I say practical enough? Um, <laughs> that card is followed by the star card, which is actually a card of hopefulness. Um, and we see a figure who has two vessels, one in each hand, one that they're pouring water into the river in front of them or stream in front of them, and one that they are pouring directly onto the ground. Now, this card is associated with the sign of Aquarius, which is where Pluto is going to be moving over the next roughly, you know, month and a half. Uh, once it's in the sign of Aquarius, it will be there for roughly 20 years. So Pluto is, again, the slowest moving planet. It takes around 240 years, 248 years to move around the entire zodiac wheel. And depending on its elliptical placement, um, it will either have 12 to 20 plus years in a sign. Um, so it's in a sign for a very long time. And when it goes into Aquarius, it's not going to be going back into Capricorn. So we'll be experiencing a lot of shifts and a lot of changes uh, in that area of Aquarius and transformation. And consider that Aquarius is also governed by the planet of Uranus. And Uranus is all about big changes and big shifts. So we have that to see you know, that's going to be soon to come. And the changes that do come, we have to give our whole heart to. We have to see what shows up and make sure that we keep our heart open, even though we may feel this kind of five to cups situation at times. Because when one door closes, it often does provide a, another door opening that could be a better circumstance or experience or at least something to learn and grow from. So this is a very powerful card of hope and it's a it's a good card to have after all of these, you know, darker cards. Um, and that's followed by the four of wands, which is a card of safety and security. So it's interesting that we started with a card of someone who's seeking safety and security and then we ended with this, you know, stable willfulness around having some kind of rest and some kind of peace and some kind of celebration. Now the card that showed up that just kind of flew out at the very end ended up being the six of wands. And this is a person who is moving forward based on past successes. We see someone who is riding a horse and they they have a laurel leaf of on a wand in triumph and victory and then behind them there's a group of people with, with wands that's cheering them on to move forward in their victory so while so whatever we're going through right now is hard and maybe looking at what in your life whether it's a habit or a relationship or just something routinely that you do that is bringing about more limitation in 